Good morning and happy Wednesday to all of you. I am out and about doing some errands today, which is unusual for me for a Wednesday morning, but I had an early morning appointment and I decided we would just do our Facebook Live here in the van before I go to my next appointment. So how about that for planning out my morning? I have been up already for several hours, done my morning routine, got dressed and ready for these appointments. Last night I laid stuff out at the launch pad. And if you're not using a launch pad to help you get out the door the next morning, that's a really important thing as a part of your evening routine, is to check the calendar, see what you've got the next day, and lay out anything that you're going to need. Because it's going to help you get out the door much smoother than if you have to wait till it's time to go out the door and you remember what you need to get. So last night I laid out the things I needed, had a plan of what I needed to do to get out the door on time, and everything has gone well so far. So today we are going to declutter a little bit in our closets. And some of you may have closets that are just completely packed. I know I talked to a lady a few weeks ago who couldn't even get to her closet for the stuff outside of it. So I know a few of you are dealing with some issues with your closet. So I wanted to tell you how I declutter in my closet every month. I look at my closet in quadrants. So I have four sections, left side, right side, the bottom of the floor, and then the top shelf. And each area has different stuff. So each month I will focus on one area, just one of those four areas. So eventually I'll work my way through the entire closet, but I'm not doing it all at one time. So I will spend five to ten minutes on the hanging stuff on the left hand side, for instance. Just pull out anything I've not worn in a year that's too big, too little, and get rid of it. If I'm looking at the bottom of the closet, I will pull out shoes I'm not wearing, shoes that don't feel good on my feet, shoes that don't fit anymore, and I'll just get rid of them. And then I'll look and see what I have on that top shelf. That's where I keep my folded stuff. My folded t-shirts, my folded shorts, um, a few quilting supplies, things that I don't access a whole lot. And I'll just start pulling things that I'm not using and get rid of them. Because I can bless somebody else with my abundance, I don't have to hang on to it just to have it. And then finally that fourth month when I work my way through my closet, I'll work through the right side where my other hanging clothes are. So you see, it might take me four months to work my way completely around my closet, but that's okay. It's better than not doing it at all. And I'm not burning out by doing, you know, four or five hours of cleaning in my closet. So that's how I deal with my closet a little at a time. And even after all the years of decluttering, I still have things to get rid of in that closet. So it's not that it's an unending project, but it's always something I can spend a few minutes in each month and make it better. And we are also working on our habit of doing laundry this month. If you have fewer clothes and your kids have fewer clothes, you're going to have fewer things to wash. It works that way. If you have overstuffed closets and overstuffed drawers, a lot of times they're not able to put the clean clothes away. Those end up back in the laundry and you're washing things that you've already washed and hasn't been worn. So keeping things minimal, and I know I will get this question today, I can't give you any really good hard numbers on how many things you need to have. What I do with the boys especially is make sure they have either three pair of blue jeans that fit, three pair of shorts, and then long sleeve shirts for the winter, maybe five or six, short sleeve t-shirts and tank shirts for the summer, and that may be, you know, seven or eight. It's not a whole lot and then they have their church clothes of course so I don't have set numbers um, for me I have about three pair of blue jeans that fit two pair of capris and I have a whole lot of tops so you've probably noticed that because I rotate through those pretty good for the videos and that tends to be where I have the most clothes is my tops so good morning Lynn thanks for posting um, if you guys have tricks and ideas on how you're maintaining your closets and what's working good, go ahead and post that down here in the comments because it's something that I get a lot of discussion about once I, I write about it, is people want to know how many things should they have. And for me, it's how much room do I have for it to fit comfortably where I can just flip through the closet and know what's there. And if I'm doing laundry, it helps to have a space to put things up when I'm done doing laundry. So that's my guide. If I can go to my closet and put my hanging clothes up and don't have to struggle, then I'm doing good. 
if I'm having to shove things in there, then I know I need to thin out. So that's just kind of the little guide that I use to know that I need to start getting rid of clothes, you know, a little bit heavier than what I've been doing. I hope you have a wonderful day. It's time for me to move on to appointment number two this morning. So I'm utilizing my time in town and my gas by doing two appointments um, and then I'll have to stop at the grocery store and pick up some more water because not having a kitchen sink I'm finding causes us to need to use um, gallons of water to make coffee and tea and those kind of things. So, you know, there are a few things I didn't plan for this week without that kitchen sink that I'm finding could have been handy. So it's been quite the experience and we may be this week and next week without that kitchen sink. So I'm being creative and patient with my routines and it's all going to be okay. I'll be happy when it's done though. Have any questions or comments, drop them down here. Otherwise, I will chat with you guys tomorrow.